Now, I don't often evaluate whiskey, but if a company sends me some samples, I will sit down and go through each step. The first thing I need is I need a little context to the whiskey. I need to know where it was made, who made it, how old it is, the alcohol by volume, all those details provide a little context to my experience. From there, I need to smell the whiskey, and sometimes I'll sip it in a little plastic cup, sometimes in a rocks glass. The industry standard seems to be this Glen Cairn glass, something that really channels the aroma up and out. But I really encourage you to find a glass that feels good, looks good, something you like drinking out of, and go with that one. It doesn't really matter. Now often, you may come across these tasting notes from whiskey drinkers. And sometimes they talk about toasted butterscotch or smoked coconut, something that is really out there. And I used to look at these and say, these are not relevant at all. And this is a big message I would like to pass along, that the experience is really between you and your spirit. Whether it's whiskey or gin or tequila or whatever, what you taste is the most relevant. When someone writes about tasting notes, they can often be very helpful. If you love whiskeys that have a toasted butterscotch character and someone keeps writing about it, you know that that whiskey's probably got it. So maybe you wanna purchase it the next time you're at the spirit store. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I need to smell the whiskey. So I'll pour a small amount of this rye whiskey into a glass and I'll show you a great trick I learned from a good old Kentucky moonshiner a couple years ago. If you take your nose and just bury it in there and smell, it sort of hurts, it burns, right? So you're gonna take this glass, you're gonna hold it away from your face a couple inches, you're gonna part your lips slightly, and you will breathe in through your nose. What will happen is your mouth sucks off all the alcohol vapors, your nose can then pick up the aromas. So it looks a little ridiculous, but it's something like this. Now I encourage you to part and close your lips back and forth, continue to smell, you will see how much more you smell the moment you part your lips slightly. The reason we wanna do this is, again, your sense of smell is much stronger than your sense of taste, so you're sort of priming your taste buds for what you're about to experience. It's often fun to see if the aroma matches the flavor and vice versa. Now we're gonna taste the whiskey, and again, this takes a little bit of work. For the most part, this is pretty pleasurable work, but developing your palate takes a lot of time. So you've smelled it, you've picked up some things that you might be looking for. When you're smelling and tasting, you're looking for, what does this remind me of? Have I ever tasted this before? Have I ever smelled this before? I'm trying to pick out names to the various flavors. So when you taste this, you're gonna pour it in your mouth, of course, you're gonna let it sit on your tongue as long as you can possibly let it sit. That's letting your saliva work in with the whiskey, that is letting your nose pick up a lot of aroma. When you can't stand it anymore, sip it down, breathe up through your nose, and let that olfactory system pick up all the aroma. So something like this. There we go. Tons of toasted coconut and smoked butterscotch. Now it's important to remember that human perception is on a sliding scale. We can all inch up if we work at it. I wanna thank you for watching this week's episode on how to taste whiskey. Get to work on your tasting notes, review them, compare them against other reviews online. But remember, practice makes perfect. So pour yourself a glass of whiskey and get to work. <laughs>